this is for clarity the most important principle of the method. This method is not about getting rid of things. It's about choosing what you want to surround yourself with. Because what you surround yourself with defines your life. And this is our most loved, beloved principle of the method. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Elliot and Marie Staub are Swiss twin sisters and founders of Clarity Home Detox. In the summer of 2016, they took part in the first ever KonMari certification course outside of Japan. The twins are both master level consultants as well as official lecturers and educators for KonMari Media Inc. Elliot and Marik live mindful and joyful lives respectfully in Geneva and Lausanne in Switzerland. Welcome to Spark Joy, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. It's so nice to be with you. We are so glad to have the Kamari twins on our show. And it's been a while. Gosh, we are both all part of the original group of trainees, definitely pre-Netflix. And we've discovered Kamari through completely different paths, which is always what we like to start with when we bring on KonMari consultants to the show. Love to hear more about how the method has impacted your life and how it really impacted your relationship as sisters as well. Oh, wow. Actually, what's interesting is that you mentioned we discovered the KonMari method, even though we live so further apart from each other. We discovered it together because the book was actually translated both in French and in English from Japanese at the same time. So this is actually why we discovered it at the same time, which is really interesting and makes it for us such an interesting group of people to be in. But from Marie and I, I'm the first one who actually discovered the book on social media, Instagram. Thank you, Instagram. And I saw the title of the book, And when I just read it, I knew this would be something special and something that we would be aligned with in some ways. And I wanted to offer it to Marik for our birthday. I mean, our birthday is at the same time since we are twins. Uh And I ordered the book on Amazon and it arrived too late for the birthday. So I thought, oh, I'll be reading it first. And I read it. And same was the title. I remember reading it and telling myself there's something so special in it. But believe me or not, when I read it, I did not feel cluttered in the sense we all generally believe we cluttered, meaning we own a lot of things, objects are lying around, and it makes us stressful. I didn't own too many objects, but I just didn't know anything about myself. So when I read it, I did not immediately apply the method. I read it and I gave it to Marik and I said, you must read this book and you will see there's something special in it. And it was right about the same time that my now ex-partner was transferred abroad. And he said, you moving out with me, you going out of Switzerland and we both moving to the Caribbeans for his work. And I said, well, this is perfect. I've just read a book that teaches people how to sort out their belongings to keep only what sparks joy to them. So that tool will actually help me moving abroad and preparing my move and starting my new life abroad with you in the Caribbeans. So I did that. I decluttered everything. I sold, gave away most of my belongings. And I went from a 60 meter square apartment to just four suitcases. And when I arrived on the island, I thought, wow, great. You know, the method's job is done. And now I can start a life that basically looks like a postcard. And I had 
everything to be happy. I had a huge house. I had access to my private beach. I wasn't allowed to work. So I had a lot of free time on my hands. I had, you know, perfect boyfriend, very successful. And actually I've never been that miserable in my life. Because even though it's written all over the book, I did not really grasp the effect that going through all of my belongings would have on me. I did not fully realize that what I was doing is that I was taking care of myself and that I was discovering who I was and how I wanted to live my life. And bit by bit, being miserable on that island, that perfect giving life, I realized that actually, even though it was, it sparked a lot of, you know, a lot of beauty where I was, it wasn't the life that I wanted to live. So that's when I turned back to Marie and I, and I started talking about her. And actually, Marie, you had the project to create a clarity when I was already abroad. Yes, exactly. Yes. So on my part is, I guess many people who are listening to us right now, it will be the same case. The book was given to me as a present from my sister. And God, I must tell you, when I got the book, I said to my sister, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like what? I'm not really clutter. Maybe a little, but not that much. Okay, maybe I'm very cluttered, but do you really think I need a book? And of course, you know, I get it and I put it on my pile of two read books and there were so many of those on that pile. And finally, one day, I don't know why, but I opened it and it was the first time and the, the last time actually a book did that to me. I immediately thought, okay, this is going to change my life forever. <laughs> like, I think I was in a moment, uh, you know, I tried yoga, I tried meditation, but all those stuff didn't work for me. And I know I was looking for something to help me, but I didn't know what to do. And by reading the book, I knew that was the help. That was the help my life needed. And finally, I did it. I decluttered day and night when my daughter was asleep and and it changed everything. And once I was done, I went on the internet. I was like, who's that woman called <laughs> Mary Kondo who changed my life? Who is she? And I went on Google. And back then, there was not a lot of information about Mary. But I did find out she has a school in Japan. And I knew that was the job I wanted to do in my life. You know, I think it's really interesting. I think so many times we talk to people here, and I know that for me and, and probably all of you, that reading the book, it was almost as though we knew something would be forever changed within us and our way of thinking. So I think that we can totally relate to that. But you know, what I find really interesting is that you are both sisters, twin sisters. So you've both known each other your entire lives, which, you know, a lot of times can you know, make doing things like starting a company together really stressful. And a lot of people might really hesitate about that. But you both decided that you wanted to become entrepreneurs and start your business as a team. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And how did you decide to do that? Yes. You know what? I think things came really naturally to us. I think even when we jumped into the wagon of being a culinary consultant and creating our own business, I think we did not realize all the work that came with it. We were just so enthusiastic about helping people to apply the method in their life. We were passionate about this. So we did not think about all the struggles we would have creating a business. And they only came afterwards. I mean, the difficulties, the realization of all the work and energy and time it would take. I mean, when we look at our days, you know, we do spend a lot of time at client, but a lot of time is actually spent working from home on our computers, trying to get these clients and trying to like spread the message of Mary Kondo's philosophy. 
So this came later on. And I think because we're so passionate about the message, we in a way became passionate about how to spread and how to build a company as well. And I think it's also, you know, when you, like you said, we twin sisters, we know each other so well, we were kind of aware that it was not going to be that easy. And when it's not easy, you still want to have fun. And I knew that behind all the difficulties, I still wanted to have fun and be able to laugh and be able to trust. And like, we have that relationship with Elliot. I know we've been traveling a lot together before doing the company. And we knew that even if we had hard times, we would still laugh about it and we would still have fun. And this is like a huge part that we love about our job is that we have so much fun. We love our clients. We love them so dearly. And I love Elliot's client and she loves mine, even though she haven't met them, you know? And uh, yeah, it's all about having fun. Life, we want to get the most fun of it, actually. Well, I really can identify with this idea of not really knowing how much work it would be beforehand. And I think it's a blessing that I didn't know how much work would be involved. But I also appreciated that, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about having fun and enjoying what you're doing. Yes. Tell us a little bit about some of the principles in KonMari that have been the most meaningful to you in the work that you do? What have been some of, you know, there's a lot of, there's so much content there. There's so much to take away from what Marie has to say. What have you both found to be some of the most important principles that you've applied in your work? That this method is not about organization. It's about choosing joy. It's about with full intention, choosing what matters to you in your life right now. This is for clarity, the most important principle of the method. This method is not about getting rid of things. It's about choosing what you want to surround yourself with. Because what you surround yourself with defines your life. And this is our most loved, beloved principle of the method. And I think also it's about like, there's a word that we use less when we talk about the method to people that, but that I've realized recently, it's about the method is really about putting a filter. And most of the time, the word filter is taken negatively, but in the sense is like putting on everything you're looking at object, but also uh, philosophies or requests that come into your life or the activities that you decide to do or that you don't decide not to continue your life. It's about just taking one second, not hurrying too much and taking one second and put just that filter of joy. And when we talk about the filter of joy, clearly we also talk about the filter of is this aligned with the objective? Is this aligned with how I want to live my life? So it's not like rushing into things, but just taking the time to live in the, the present moment and using that filter. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on join the club to get started. And now back to the show. I love how you use the term filter. I often use the phrase lens of joy. I think that's probably similar to what you're describing. Like doing everything with a lens of joy, shifting perspectives. And that's really what I want. I'm so excited to ask you about is your perspective on the adoption or the reaction 
of Kanmari overseas. So we definitely, of course, at the top of the year, once the Netflix series changed the game when it came to the Kanmari method, I would love to hear what or how Kanmari has been uh, received where you are in Switzerland and just how has that impacted your business and relationship with your clients? Yes. So I don't know if you're, you know, the audience out there is very familiar with Switzerland, but basically Switzerland has three parts. It has one part where we speak Swiss German, a part where we speak Italian and a part where we speak French. And we are from the French part of Switzerland. And when the book came out in 2015, It was, and it's still, a huge success in the French-speaking part of Switzerland. The numbers of books Mary sold here in the French part are people like libraries, have a bookstore, sorry, have never seen this in a self-development book. I mean, it must be the book that worked the most in the self-development shelf. So from the start... Our company, Clarity, and our services were actually very well received by the people and by the press and the media in a general way. Netflix is something else because actually Netflix isn't that yet popular in our country. So when we saw that, you know, with all the consultants in the U.S., really something shifted in the knowledge of the people, of the method, of the philosophy... Here, it did not impact our work that much, Marika. You, do you agree with me? No, I, I totally agree. It, it really didn't change um, mm-hmm. at all the business. And, but what I want to add to it, and I think that's a big difference between the state and Europe, is that people here are less, how would I put this? They're less invited to seek for help. And this is like right now, if a message I really want to get across, and I guess you have a lot of audience also in Europe, that it is okay to ask for help. Maybe you bought the book and you read it and you loved it. And like myself, you were like, oh, I think I should try because this might help me to get more clarity in my life and in other environment than just my home, you know, in my head, in my body as well, in my heart. But I don't know how to do it alone. And I'm sure it will never work alone. Some of you might have even tried and and were very disappointed and frustrated because somehow it didn't work. And it's okay to have help. And the European, sometimes, you know, they just want to do it on their own. And if they fail, they will not tell their neighbor, I tried, but it didn't work. And in 2019, we can stop a moment and we can reach for help and say, you know, I've tried and it didn't work. Do you have any advice for me? And I think, yeah, it's a big difference. And I want the European to be less maybe proud. or I don't know if that's the (laughs) right word, but to be aware that it's okay to not do it on your own and to be always successful, that you can be very successful and have all the credit, although you ask for help. Sorry, I'm jumping in, but this is actually something that happened for ourselves too. Uh, Personally, we did not seek for help when we did our decluttering because there was no other Conmary consultant when we started in Switzerland. But when we did create our businesses, Early on, we realized we cannot do it all by ourselves. Uh, First, the website was done by ourselves, but then we hired a webmaster. We hired someone, an account. We hired a business coach to help us out. So I think when you talked before about how the method changed our lives, it did change our life in this way too, that now we are more inclined to say, okay, you know what? I can't do this by myself. I'm reaching out for help and it's just okay and maybe even better to reach out for help. Well, I really like this idea that you were talking about that a lot of times it's much more efficient, not only time-wise, but money-wise to have someone help you. And I think what you just identified as part of your business is it's, it's much easier to have people who are knowledgeable in different areas come and actually make things work smoother and get you off on the right foot, like you just said, with your webmaster. And I think in a lot of ways, having somebody come and 
help you with getting tidy is really similar, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's not really a matter of, you know, oh, I should be able to do this on my own. It's really a matter of this is just not an area that everyone is well versed in. You know, for us, I think for organizers, it's something that just comes more naturally to us. It's definitely something that can be taught and learned, but it's not necessarily intuitive. So I think that that's a really super interesting point. Exactly. And because we help people feeling better in their homes, we do have a lot of comments coming from also people to whom we talk about, like, what is our job and what we do. People have strange reaction, like, aren't people supposed to know how to tidy? Isn't someone supposed to know how to take care of his home and his belongings and what to surround themselves with? And it's actually coming and being like, no, because we're organizers, we might have something more intuitive, as you said, but we also have this professional eye and we help people looking at what they surround themselves with just in a different way through, as you were saying, Kristen, through another lens. Yeah, it's all about recognizing that we all have different superpowers. And I love that the exercise of exploring our objects and viewing things through a lens of joy, whether we execute that independently or with the support of a Kanmari consultant, opens ourselves up to leaning on support Uh, for others in other areas of our life. I know that I'm way more comfortable with reaching out now to a nutritionist or a business coach or other professionals because I have executed this method and I have a very clear idea of my strengths and my weaknesses. So I think Mm -hmm. it's great that not only we are opening the door to viewing this exercise as nothing to be afraid of or ashamed of if it doesn't come to us naturally. It really is a learned skill And there are people out there to help. Well, it's really like if we can resume, it's about self-discovery. And I think it's it's a beautiful, soft and hard and funny and difficult way of getting to know yourself for decluttering and like letting go of who you thought you were going to be and letting go of who you wanted to be at some point in your life and just accepting who you are and where you are and and just from that point to move on with your life with full intention and it's beautiful and it's interesting for our listeners to clarify when all of us were going through the process of becoming kanmari consultants there weren't any of us that existed in the world at that time so we all had Mm -hmm. to prove as a part of our application that we have tidied up at home And I'm curious for all of you ladies, including you, Karen, if when you completed the original training and you went back home, did you tidy some more? Because I know I did. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, we all did. (laughs) We all did. And what's interesting is, and what we want to share today too, is that I I am still are, you know, decluttering. There is no end to this. Of course, the big marathon and I don't do the pile anymore. Sure. But like life moves on. Life is organic. Life is messy. Life is not tidy at all. And we change. Thanks God we do change. We evolve. And, you know, now and then I put on a sweater and I'm like, wait a minute. How do you feel in that sweater? And I'm like, oh, my God joy is over. Like, I thank you sweater. And I'm gonna ask, you know, my stepsister or whoever wants the sweater and I'll give it to donation. But like, it always moves. I think what you want to say here, Mahik, is that we don't seek for perfection, right? Sometimes when we describe our job, people have this image of us that lives in like a perfect super tidy place where there's never any mess. And we always want to get through the message that it's never perfection that we aiming for. It's some kind of progress and it's our own to define what are their steps of progress and how big or how little are we happy with our progress. 
we are just coming back from a fabulous weekend that we spend Marika and I together trying not to talk about business, but only about joy. And she looked at me and she said, I think this suitcase is going to be still packed in my apartment for a few days. And you know what? That is completely fine because I know now that having this unpacked suitcases, it's not stressful for my sister or for me anymore because I know the moment that I will have the few seconds I'll have to tidy everything and to unpack this suitcase, it won't be stressful anymore because I know where everything belongs and where everything goes. So really the message is like never try to be perfect. Just try to find these moments where you feel okay and good with yourself. We just spoke about these kinds of things in our quick tips episode called Con My Light. So I'll make sure that we include a link in the show notes because it was absolutely addressing just what you've been talking about, this idea mm-hmm. that that things change and that the outfit that was perfect a month ago may not be perfect shape any longer. Maybe your taste has changed. So I think it's definitely just part of, of the fine tuning. And having just gotten back from a two-week vacation, Let me just say, it's very rare in my life that there are two weeks worth of laundry to do. The laundry's done, but it will be a couple of days, maybe three days, maybe four days before everything gets put away. So, you know, that's that's just life. I think part of seeking joy is that we recognize that sometimes we put things that are more task-oriented aside to take care of ourselves, you know, and Mm -hmm. I think it's perfectly good. I'd like to shift gears a little bit and talk about the other aspect of the work that you do as trainers working with KMI. And part of that function or the primary part of that function is to teach the method to new potential consultants. Can you tell us about that work and how did you get started doing that and what has that been like for you? It's been amazing sharing and Meeting a future consultant is like a big load of joy for us. Elliot and I, we very, you know, we very curious and we love to learn and we are learning so much just by sharing our experience with other person. And it's been wonderful. And also, you know, like, because most of our clients are European, although, you know, Europe is not really, I mean, it's such a mix of people from everywhere. And we've worked with so many people from different culture. And then we co-teach with Patty Morisset, who's in New York, and she has a lot of American clients. And this has been, you know, really a beautiful ride. I had the pleasure of firsthand hearing you guys execute the Kanmari training in New York. And that was so fun because I love how not only the Kamari method and brand has expanded and changed and shifted throughout the years we've been involved in the community, but also the training program has also just improved so much, especially as more and more of us have gained more and more experience around Kamari and just executed in so many different places all around the globe. I would love to hear your thoughts on what makes a good Kamari consultant and If someone is interested in this idea of becoming a consultant, what they should consider? I think the first thing we say to anyone that comes to us and says, oh, I love the method so much. I love what it has bring to my life and how it has changed it. We do want them to always realize that there is a big difference between living the Conmary philosophy and loving all the benefits of it, but then being at someone's place and teaching and guiding them into applying the method in their lives, sitting next to them while they're having those conversations, triggering those conversations and helping them in the conversation they have with themselves through the object that they own. So first of all, it's like, it's something like a little bit decluttering the joy that you feel after the method. Do you love the method, the joy it's bring to your life so much, but are you ready to sit down with someone and walk someone through the method in their homes 
surrounded by their belongings and listening to to their stories and their feeling. So it's about realizing, like just notifying what brings you joy really in the method. And if they're ready, I think I'm looking at Marik while I say this, but I think one of the most useful tool to have with you is to be compassionate, to love, deeply love other human beings and to be able to put yourself in their shoes. Because if we all seeking the end result that we seeking is joy, but joy can mean so many different things. So when we come to someone's place, it's not our definition of joy that we need to take with us. So it's about being able to be there for the person, hold the space, guide their conversation, but being able to like step back to let them shine themselves. So it's really about finding the right balance when you're with someone. And I'm going to add something maybe a little bit more pragmatic, but do not be allergic to dust. <laughs> because, I mean, we spend our days dusty, not always so clean floors, and in people's clutter. That's our, Elliot and I, that's clarity daily life. But, oh, we love it. <laughs> but let's be aware, you know, you're going to go in if, that's the job you want to do. You're going to go into people's house and you're going to see their joy, but also their despair and their sadness and their happiness and they clean laundry and they dirty laundry. And all of this you will face. And like Elliot said, if you don't love human being hmm. so much, don't do it. And I think going back to your question about the teaching and what has brought us so much joy is that we were asked to, to teach three years, or almost like two years and a half or two years, two very good years of practicing the KonMari method and being a KonMari consultant. I think our greatest joy and what we share most during those courses is to teach the consultant or the future consultant all the mistakes. Yeah. we've done ourselves so that they can not do them or that rather they can build on what we have discovered at clients because the philosophy most of the of course we go through the philosophy again but but it's about really how to be a consultant and how to share the philosophy of the method hands-on under someone else's roof. I couldn't agree with you more. I still remember walking into the training and just trying to guess what the agenda would be. And I was just mm -hmm. thinking, oh, maybe we're going to go through the different steps of the method or learn how to fold socks more advanced or something. I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out what the training was actually going to be. And it really brings back the fact and the focus of that this is a people's service and in people services, it's all about being compassionate, listening, and understanding how to not only execute the technique, but how to navigate the relationship mm -hmm. of basically being a coach for mm -hmm. someone executing this and needing to not only walk away with a tidy space, but also learn something about how they're going to move their life forward and adopt habits that really help them be more productive and just lead a life of joy. Mm -hmm. It's so great that you guys are taking the lead here and helping generations of Kanmari consultants shift through this process and really help those on the ground execute it in the best, most efficient way. And we should mention if we have a listener who is excited about the idea of becoming a KonMari consultant and wants to learn more, please feel free to check out episode 33 of Spark Joy podcast. It's titled How to Become a KonMari Consultant. We break down all of the frequently asked questions that we receive about this process. And we hope that this serves as kind of a, a starting point for you if you're looking to go down that path. One thing we must ask you both is what is your favorite tidying tip? Well, I think 
One very important tip for us, tidying tip, is always remember to first focus on sorting out. Do not rush out to buy some fancy boxes, some fancy storing solution. We believe this way is such a high risk to lose some money, to lose some of your time, and to lose some of your energy on the long run. First, focus on what sparks joy to you. And in order to do this, you need to accept anything that is temporary. You will not find maybe the perfect storing solution first, but it will come along the way. So arm yourself with some patience and really be disciplined and focus on the joy first. And if I can jump in, I would add that once you've done with your tidying or during the tidying as well, it goes with what Elliot said, is consider buying less. Be aware that every time you take out your wallet, you're not just buying something, but you're making an investment. And maybe it's about time to invest in yourself and not to invest in more things. And this is really a tip that I love because it shifts a lot in the way we consume and how we treat the earth and We know we have to treat it differently because we still need it. And I think it's a beautiful way to see the method as well. Wow, that's great. So we also ask all of our guests, what is sparking the most joy for you at this very moment? And of course, we'd like to hear what you each individually have to say to that question. (laughs) Well, I think we have a common joy right now, Marik and I, is that We've had the honor and extreme joy of being asked to take part in a TEDx presentation that will be held uh, in December in the city where Mike lives in Lausanne. And we've been big fans also of TEDx, of TED presentations and any speaking presentation. And this is something new for us. Uh, This is something scary. This is something we've reaching out for help. So we've already surrounded ourselves with people that are expert in preparing uh, TEDx speakers. And this is a really big joy because it's also for us a way, don't get me wrong in saying this, we adore and we will still always go in people's home and help them declutter. But to do uh, speaking engagement is a way for us to really spread some of the very core principle of the method. Obviously, we do not go into details on how to fold or how to store it when we do those presentation. So for us, it's uh, discovering a way to spread uh, some of the core principle of the KonMari method in another way. That sparked a lot of joy to us. The trust. And I'm talking to all the consultant and I'm talking to all the person out there who are going to seek for help is how thankful we are for the trust you give us. And I'm saying this because I know a lot of our clients are also listening to Elliot and I, and they follow us and they, you know, read our article in the press and listen to the radio show. Thank you so much for the trust you have in us, for opening your door to us, opening all your drawers and letting us enter your life and letting us put on your eyes some other lenses Mm -hmm. and talk about this and having the the braveness to taking your life seriously and taking your time seriously and daring to be brave. It's such an inspiration for us and we are so thankful for that. And that's just super joy. (laughs) We're so thankful who are you being on our show today? And I'd love to end with some, any parting words of wisdom that you have for our listeners. Just take it easy. Keep doing stuff out of love and out of fun and it will all work out. 
decluttering is not easy. It's just going to take a lot of your time, maybe some of your money and a lot of your energy, but it's also worth it. So just give it a try. It's worth it, trust us. Mm -hmm. And I think going back to what we said previously is that never aim to be perfect. It's completely fine to be tired some days. It's completely fine sometimes not to have an answer. It's completely fine to look at a room and, and feel like it's messy. It's completely okay. This is organic. This is life. And it's just fine. In this process, the most important person is yourself. And it's all about self-care and self-discovery. And sometimes it takes time. So create your own path. Maybe have someone in mind or clearly have some objective because we know how keys the, the objective are to the method. But have this in mind and create your own path and create your own life. You both brought such delight to our show today and we really appreciate having you both here. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Thank you. You can reach Clarity Home Detox at clarityhomedetox.ch. That's C-H at the end. And Clarity Home Detox is happy to offer a 10% discount on all of their services for any local listeners. Please use the code SPARKJOYPODCAST for your discount. So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning, tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community, or you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your host, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co-hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.